Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Joe McLeod on the line. He's founder and head of engineering over at And End. Joe, welcome to the show. Thank you, Adam. Delighted to be here. All right, so Joe, so when I read your uh when I read your title head of engineering, I was like, okay, this is either a uh either a spelling error and then I look a little bit closer. I'm like, no, this guy's sharp. He's got it. And I want to hear more about how you came up with that title and we're going to learn more about an end. Um but before we yeah. do that, uh we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters minute. So, Joe, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Joe, what mission matters to you? So, I'm head of engineering at And End, and I'd like everyone to think about the consumer offboarding experience. And so, I want to do this in two sections. So, firstly, to encourage consumers to think about the end of their product experience. They need to be asking, how does this end? And then secondly, I want to get businesses to have a vision at the end of the consumer product experience and say, how should this end? Because we spend so much time not thinking about the end and we have problems in environment, in um, product sort of disassembly and all sorts of aspects of the consumer offboarding experience are dismantled and um, broken at the end. So building a new genre for companies to think about endings as a really good place to do business. So they can say goodbye to the consumer in a far better way. That's awesome. And uh, great to have you on the show and uh, excited to learn more about And End. And um, just to kind of kick it off, how did you get started as an entrepreneur? Like, where did all this start for you? So I've been in product development for t- before I got into this because it seems crazy, doesn't it? Why would anyone want to get into designing <laughs> endings of products? So f- first of all, I totally understand how people are probably, or your listeners are going, what's this guy on about? So <laughs> I've had decades of experience of doing products. Uh, so I worked in big companies, small companies, shipping, you know, big global companies, shipping products all around the world. And, you know, this is across product, service, and digital sectors. So I've got a lot of experience. And we would all come to the same pattern every time I was working with groups and companies. We'd get really excited about the onboarding, advertising, marketing, what we're going to design and deliver to the consumer, how we're going to tell that incredible story. And then we'd spend days and hours and weeks and potentially years sometimes crafting beautiful experiences for the consumer. And then we'd all walk away from it. And so you'd have all of these products out in the marketplace, which no one thought through how it's going to end. So the consequence of this ends up with the consumer being abandoned at the end of the product experience. And in that abandonment, they are then blamed, criticized, and they don't know what to do. So the consequence of this ends up in houses full of clutter that we don't know what to get rid of because we haven't got a vocabulary. We haven't built a vocabulary for society to say, how does this end? And I'm sure that you've got loads of listeners thinking, I've got loads of stuff at home <laughs> like this. Mm-hmm. Um, a good example is um, electronics. There's, um, there was a bit of research done in the UK recently. That there's 55 million phones in drawers just in the UK, which have been abandoned because people don't know what to do at the end of the product life. So they're just worried that their data might get lost or how do I dispose of it properly or what do I do with this at the end? They also found in London alone 13 um, bits of e-waste on average in people's homes. And then I think it was Birmingham with 11 bits of e-waste on average. So this is a big problem. And I know the U.S. has a similar problem. I'm quite in. Uh, British numbers here, but I know the the US had similar problems. So we've got, that's an example of it in a product sphere, but we have similar things in in digital where we haven't designed the end of the consumer life cycle in in sort of digital product experiences as well. So that's a little bit of a flavor of what what I'm doing, yeah. So 
how did you come? So I understand your background and I understand how you created um, some of the company, but how did you kind of feel like, okay, I have to like, how did you get passionate about the ending of this, of, so, of the product lifestyle? Because I think it's super, ex- it, like everything that you said, it's hard to get something like a completely new concept in my head. Like I've done over 5,000 interviews and I don't mean that as like saying I'm some great host. I just mean in general, like I've heard of a lot of ideas, a lot of things. I've I'm never sure, heard yeah. anybody focusing on this. Like it's kind of, I'm kind of blown away today. How did you fall so in love was- with this concept? So it wasn't really a spark. It was more, um, I spent a lot of time thinking about closure experiences. So I come from a design Mm. background. I spent a lot Mm. of time thinking about closure experiences on a particular project. And this was 2005. So this goes way back. Mm -hmm. But closure experiences is about satisfaction at the end of a task when you're trying to achieve a task in interaction design or product, product design. It's a bit different to ending. So I, over a, I'd done loads of career in product companies, etc. And, and about mm-hmm. sort of six years ago, I decided my wife wanted to get back to work. I wanted to investigate this theme and hang out with my kids. So, and I was thinking, I'm going to look into that and I'll write a medium article or I'll do a conference mm-hmm. talk or something like that. So it was sort of a little bit of a side project. And I started looking into this thing and I started from the point of view of, of death. That started a great big sort of journey into digging into why don't we like endings and of course death being a pretty good one to avoid in life and but I started to look into the social sort of experience of that and going right back into um, why that's impacted on the end of the consumer life cycle and that dragged through goes way back to the plague and the Protestant uprising and this started my first book so I started digging into that and I really didn't want to write a book. I am pretty dyslexic, but you'll hear a lot of authors, which I'm sure you've interviewed, is say they have to write a book. It isn't that they want to write a book, they have to tell a story. And Mm -hmm. I got to that point. So I ended up writing the first book that came out in 2017. It's called Ends, um, Why We Overlook Endings for Humans, Products, Services and Digital and Why We Shouldn't. And that's out on Amazon, so you can go and get that on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really documents the sociological sort of journey of history. And it goes right from, as I was saying, Protestant uprising, industrial revolution, beginning of marketing. It, then it takes it right up to modern day through um, uh, the fi- final three chapters of product, service and digital sectors and seeing how this avoidance of endings, this bias has been built into all of these um, sectors and how We're now paralyzed when we come to things like issues around the environment, um, issues around digital ethics, and issues around sort of um, mis-selling and financial services, for example. Mm. We fail to have a vocabulary around that, which is mature enough to have proper discussions. So what we tend to do is slam legislation into it instead of taking the really amazing tools that we've built for consumer experiences to be applied at the end of the consumer life cycle. So instead of sort of smashing legislation in there and thinking very, and actually we apply a lot of sort of emotional guilt to people, which is a very old traditional method of making people change things from religion. So we we need to start thinking and applying these modern tools, marketing, advertising, you know, all of these sort of things into the end of the consumer life cycle. So we have a far better um intelligent conversation and engagement with the consumer at that point so we can get a lot more traction. So um, that's a lot around the first book, Ends, and then the second book uh, came out last year. And that, So in the, this long journey that I've done over the last few years, I've learned a lot about how we might do this and how we might design it and build it. And so the engineering book, I a smash up between Ends and Engineering, so Engineering, um, that book tells you how to do it. So it talks about different characteristics. There's eight types of endings that the consumer um, tends to experience at the end of the consumer life cycle. And you can think about these in terms of their characteristics, how you might design for them, what you might do for them. And then the different phases the consumer goes through as they uh, move away from the, from the consumer relationship and what psychology they're going through. So there's a load of psychology in the books as well. Mm. 
So I want to um, I want to shift focus slightly here. Yeah, um, sure. What's, what's in it for the What's in it for the company when they get this right on the back end? Like what's Absolutely. in it for the so, company? Because it that's I I get the consumer side, I get the other side, but like what happened? Because I'm thinking about it. Like I'm sure somebody's been plotting and somebody's helped me with maybe part of a journey that I didn't even realize. But what's in it for the company that that goes through this? Exactly. So, and which is the soundest question that anyone asks. So for years, I've been having this question asked me. So on a number of levels, companies can really improve many aspects of their business by thinking about endings. If you're very crude about it, think about how much effort a business puts into onboarding and usage periods and think about how little they put into the offboarding experience. And if you've, if you're a sound business and respect business knowledge and strategy, then you've got a massive blind spot there. That often, as I was saying, gets filled with legislation. So society Mm -hmm. tends to apply legislation for it. So if you are looking at endings, then you can really preempt a lot of legislation. That's a good one. But that's quite a dry one as well. Mm -hmm. It also helps them so you can reduce business risk and preempt legislation. Those are dry ones. But actually, consumer satisfaction is incredibly higher with companies that do good endings. So humans trust companies that are honest about the end and are comfortable with an ending. I'll give you an example like Netflix. Netflix says around endings that they're proud of the no-hassle online cancellation that they give for members. So you can pause your Netflix account anytime you fancy. So they're really happy for you to just pause it. But then... In contrast to that, um, cable companies in the U.S., I I know there's a lot of um, people who have terrible experiences with cable companies because they're locked into a 12-month contract that they can't get out of, and then you have very punitive fees to get out of there. So being comfortable with the end actually has a lot of benefits for consumer satisfaction. You see it in gyms as well, actually. Gyms apply punitive fines for you leaving early and having gyms that have – very comfortable, easy endings makes um, makes people a lot more comfortable and satisfied by going to it. Of course, the, and then moving on from that, there's, of course, there's a sustainability benefit to this. So if any, but any business, product business, got a circular economy strategy, they tend to have a very circular economy strategy based around materials, manufacturing, efficiencies, um, stuff like that. When you get to, and I end up at a lot of conferences on sustainability and circular economy design stuff, so I end up on panels and having this discussion with people. It's fascinating how avoided the idea of a customer is in a lot of those areas. So you've almost got this avoidance of speaking about the customer. The customer experience of the circular economy is almost absent in any circular economy discussion. So thinking about that, there's this big gap in the circular economy, which is the consumer experience of boarding in the end. So even if you've got, for example, the best, most wonderful circular economy chair, a person buys it, they use it, they love it. How it goes from that person's house to the perfect recycling method is all up for grabs in terms of it hasn't been designed in a lot of these cases because we don't design endings. So it really needs to be thought of, especially around circularity. Mm. Um, and another weird one, which is, is quite peculiar, um, and a lot of people are surprised at, is the idea it will improve sales. So um, Dan Pink said about the, the sales person, Dan Pink, he says of people are a lot more comfortable about signing up with someone if they can see the off-ramp of how to get out of that experience. <laughs> and you can see this from businesses that apply, um, are passionate about looking at the end of the product life cycle. So a good example is Kia Cars. I think I pronounced that right. Kia, Kia Cars, the, mm-hmm. the car company. They introduced the seven-year warranty about 12 years ago. But when that was to a marketplace, which many warranty periods were two years. So that was like product quality materials. But seven years is... An interesting time it's humans find it hard to think beyond five years so when you get to seven years it's like this void this death-like void and your car then falls into that void when and Kaya cars with the seven-year warranty are saying we're here 
we know this is going to end at this point. And since they introduced the seven-year warranty, their uh, global market share has doubled. Their um, research says that their customers like the seven-year warranty above every other facet of the product offering, whether it be design or price point. Or, and it's, and um, I think that's a really good example of how an ending can be actually a massive benefit to sales. Wow. Great. Well, Joe, I know we just uh, scratched the surface on uh, on what's possible with uh, an end. Um, that being said, I know there's some individuals listening to this that will want to follow up and connect and learn more about what you're doing for businesses. Um, what's the best way for people to reach out and to connect? Sure. So a great place to start is the andend.co website. Uh, so that's my business front end. That's where and end is. Uh, so on there, you can look at the training I do. So I have um, a number of different training options, whether that be uh, for your businesses. I come into businesses or do it online. I also run a cohort so you can sign up for a month. The next one's in January. So uh, look on look on the website for the next one in January. I also do talks for all sorts of businesses. So um, I've been at uh, companies like Microsoft and um, uh, Logitech and all sorts of businesses to do talks and training. So look at the clients I've had in the past and also look at the books. So the books are another good place to start. The An the ENDS book is um, the foundational stuff. So if you're really interested in why we don't do endings in consumerism, that's a great place to start. But if you want to get practical real quick, then go to the engineering book. These are both on Amazon, but you can also get them on Smashwords, on eBooks. Uh, the ends book also has a um, audio book. Uh, yeah, so um, get to the website, get to the books. And um, I also do free talks for education as well, because I know a lot of students are really interested in this, so I don't charge for the talks for schools and colleges and universities. Fantastic. And uh, we'll put we'll definitely put your links down in the show notes so that our so that our audience can go over and uh, click out and check check out all the books and your work. So excited to have that. And uh, speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with Mission Matters or listening to an episode, we're a platform that's all about bringing on entrepreneurs, executives and experts and having them share their mission, uh, the reason behind their mission, why they do what they do and really how we can all learn and grow together and benefit from that information. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or engaging to you, hit that subscribe button because we have plenty of uh, more of mission-based entrepreneurs coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Joe, really, it has been a pleasure. Thanks again for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks very much, Adam. Thank you.